Well, let's see what there is to see at this time of year. There is an abundance of choice. I look up at the uh, white lilacs. They're very big now. One of them was given to me by my patient, Molly, who in turn was given it by her aunt. <laughs> Third generation lilac. <laughs> Anyway, there are going to be a few things to show you on the left-hand wall there. So let's go and have a look. Before we do, we'll just have a quick glance to the right. You see that laburnum with the lovely wild irises and the wisterias. Anyway, let's have a look. Uh, a couple of Chinese treasures here, if uh, Bertie will allow me. And the first one is this creeping euphorbia. It's a miniature thing and produces little orange flowers, as you can see. Came from Sichuan, where I did some collecting many years ago. It just creeps about happily. Funnily enough, I collected this uh, near a place where we were stopping for lunch and uh, it was a sort of modern restaurant place. And I remember the most extraordinary thing was Going to the loo, which of course was open plan, and there was a charming Chinese gentleman sitting in one of the um, stalls. We can't call them cubicles, because they weren't cubicles. Anyway, he passed the time of day with us uh, pleasantly. But on the way out, I remember the gutters around this restaurant were full of water. I don't know what use that was, but there were goldfish swimming in the gutters. <laughs> Absolutely extraordinary. So that was an interesting um, adventure. Never mind the plants. Also in Sichuan, in a, a wood, I noticed a little honeysuckle shrub <clears throat> flowering away. Somehow it was lighting up uh, that bit of the wood even though the flowers are absolutely minute. I'm rather taken with it. And so here it is. With its tiny little creamy yellow flowers. Not what one would call highly ornamental and certainly stiffly upright. <clears throat> but these tiny flowers are all over the place. And in typical fashion for a honeysuckle, they are in pairs. Now, just above the charming euphorbia, we follow up the uh, smooth, smooth bark of the tree fuchsia, fuchsia ex corticata, and peeking in there amongst the foliage are the tiny flowers and they are remarkable in that so many of them just come straight out of the trunk. Of course in its native New Zealand this can grow enormous tree-like with fabulous smooth bark uh, but unfortunately too tender to do that here. Still there we are. Intriguing. Now coming past the little honeysuckle, Lanicera. My eye is taken by this very large umbellifer. This it's got very fine foliage, a sort of filigree foliage with these rather 
imposing flowers. This comes from the Peloponnese in Italy and Spain and has got a rather tongue-twisting name, Molopospermum Peloponnesiacum. I've been practicing. Anyway, it's very imposing and a beautiful plant. And while we're still following this wall, here are the mass of flowers of the semi-double form of Clematis Montana, called Marjorie. And absolutely covered. I can't believe it's a whole year since we saw this charming Australian scrambler, Hubertia aspera. And I see he's just climbing up the wall there as well. I think it's a gorgeous little thing. It tends to be a bit on the tender side. But here it's tucked in under the bit of sporum. And somehow the yellow goes very well with the very sort of dark green rounded leaves. Hubertia scandens is a larger flowered form, but that really is a conservatory plant. Hibertia comes from George Hibbert, named after him, an English merchant, very rich man, slave owner, ship owner, creator of the West India Dock in London, in order to service his sugar plantations in Jamaica. He was an amateur botanist and he did support botanical trips to Australia and South Africa to collect seed and he grew a lot of these plants in his garden in London. Hibbert with uh, <clears throat> Sir William Hillary and another influential friend, the three of them set up a National Institute for the saving of uh, property and lives after shipwreck. There were thousands of shipwrecks every year with tremendous loss of life. And the three of them set this institute up, which later became the Royal National Lifeboat Institution in 1824. He died in 1837 at the age of 80. But he was a ardently pro-slavery and uh, came head to head with William Wilberforce on the subject. Rather ironically, they both lived in Clapham at one time and both worshipped at the same church. Anyway, I shan't look at it the same way again, but it is delightful. Now let's have a look at this quite close to the Hibertia, this climber from China with red flowers, which has completely covered its supporting fence. It's producing quite a good show. This is a climber called Shizandra rubriflora. Rubriflora is pretty self-explanatory. There is also Shizandra chinensis, which has a rather pale orangey flowers lost in the foliage and I think that should be avoided quite frankly. There's also Grandiflora which has variable coloured flowers but I think the Rubriflora one here is the one to go for. It'll take a while just to look at the wonderful new growth of some of the sycamores. This one is a commercially available one from years back 40 years ago I planted this. This is 
a variety called Simon Louis Frere with variegated foliage. Especially nice uh, when it first comes out and it's got the shrimp pink in it. Our tree in front of the old house, sycamore, plain old sycamore, used to throw out variegated seedlings from time to time, quite frequently really, about one in a hundred or so, some of which were nonsense, but others I kept potted up. One of them looked exactly like the markings on this tree. the end of the uh, Davidia season in front of the Coffer Beach is uh, the commercial Asa Brilliantissimum and of course presumably these were all started in the same way by the variegated seedlings from a, an ordinary sycamore The late season this year has meant that uh, Rhododendron Yakusimanum has come out with the large now tree of Maturia magnolia fairy blush, absolutely covered in its pink flowers, fading to a white with a pink base to it. Not to mention it's wafting lemon scent as I stand here beneath it. Just looking at new growth. This is what attracted me to this plant of Cornus Hong Kongensis, which I got from Spinner's Nursery years ago. In rather a compact form. I have another one which has formed like a tree. I haven't seen any flowers on this yet. Flowering beneath that uh, amazing Lunicera subaqualis is a charming dwarf azalea rhododendron from Taiwan called Rhododendron rubri pilosum, given to me by that great plantsman, Morris Foster. I have just time to show you Another of my treasures, the rhododendron I collected in Sichuan in 2004. And it really is flowering beautifully. Lovely scent. This is rhododendron decorum. And I remember sitting on a bank in the wooded part of a valley in amongst these rhododendrons up in the mountains. Lovely. Coming back down to the house, have a chance just to pass by that wonderful standard wisteria, Isai, with its scented long racemes of flowers. <laughs> 